Raise your hand if when you heard that there was going to be a live action movie of Dora the Explorer, you were like groaning to yourself. But then, after you saw the trailer for Dora and the Lost City of Gold, you were like, oh, maybe this might be okay. Dora goes on a quest to save her parents as they're looking for a lost Incan city of gold. And she brings along her friends on this adventure as well. Isabella Moner stars in the title role of this and she does a really good job. I mean, she plays the character with such a wild abandon and like commitment that she matches the cheesiness, the heart, the fun of our animated hero. And a few times she breaks the fourth wall, which has a really good effect. Now, obviously I did not grow up watching Dora the Explorer, but my kids did. And so I watched it along with them. I think the feeling and the tone of the cartoon has translated pretty well into this live action movie. Boots the Monkey is in this and it's obviously CGI. Now it's not on par with Lion King with that photorealistic, just lifelike animation. And he is kind of this bluish gray monkey. So you kind of have to suspend a little bit of reality anyway. I mean, come on, we're watching a movie about a cartoon made into live action. So we're, of course, we're gonna suspend some, some belief and some reality in this. But honestly, the effects on him aren't that bad. I mean, they are not absolutely A++ top tier, but they're not just trash either. We also get Swiper the Fox and his CGI animation isn't very good at all. I mean, think Sonic before the internet exploded. But in this, he's just brown instead of blue like Sonic the Hedgehog. And it's just, it's not, it's not awesome. Especially even compared to Boots, the other <laughs> CGI character in there. One, one looks much better than the other. I like that the movie is very self-aware and knows exactly what it is. And I think that's thanks in part to the director James Bobbin or James Bobin, whatever. He directed both of the Muppets reboots and those two films are very aware of what they are also. I mean, they, they, they know where they exist in our reality. They know just what they are and how they impact us. And they have a lot of fun with that. And I think that's exactly what's going on in Dora as well, that it knows what universe it sits in. It knows just what it is, what it was and what it's trying to be and who it's talking to. And then it gets to have a lot of fun with it. All the other actors do pretty well also, and they each get their moments to kind of shine, to bring out a little bit of their personality. For the most part though, the story is, is pretty, it's simple. I guess it, it's not totally developed. Um, the motivations of certain people are not absolutely developed. And so it is pretty thin kind of in just the story realm. And even a lot of the characters, I mean, even though they do get their moments to shine, we only get little glimpses of who they are actually and why they are there or why they're doing what they're doing. Now, in the grand scheme of the movie, you just kind of go along and you have a lot of fun with it and they get some funny lines and so you're okay with it. But if you really dive into it, the characters are, well, they're thin also, just like the story. Personally, I would have liked to have gotten more of Michael Pena as Dora's dad. I mean, I just really like him as an actor and secretly deep down, I was hoping for some scenes of Luis, you know, from Ant-Man. I mean, just Michael Pena doing that character or just being kind of silly like that. We do get some silliness from him, which I really appreciate but I just wanted more of it. Without going into spoiler territory, there were just bits and parts of the story that were out of place because they broke the rules for the universe that they had created for us. And while, okay, it is an animated movie made into live action, and so it's based off of a cartoon, you can break a lot of rules. I have no problem with that if you set up those rules at the beginning, but they set up different rules and then kind of broke them. And so, you know, it's a minor point, but it, it did bug me a little bit. The film also feels really long. I mean, it's only an hour and 42 minutes, but it felt even longer than that. It felt really close to two hours long. And there's just, there's some long scenes or there's some repetitive scenes or just scenes where the, the dialogue, the skit, the bit, whatever that is, just kind of repeats itself a little bit. And so you're like, oh, we could probably cut this out. We could cut this out. When you add those all up, you could probably cut out 15, 20 minutes maybe, and which would be drastic, I know, but it did. It really felt like there were a lot of scenes that were just either pointless or just too much of the same thing and just redundant. Now, if you aren't somebody that grew up in the late 90s or early 2000s, 
or you don't have kids of that age or even grandkids of that age, this movie is probably of no interest to you. If you do fit in one of those categories, it is a fun trip down memory lane. I mean, there is some nostalgia to it. We get a little bit of songs. There is a lot of cheesiness. And Isabella Monet really kills it as Dora. I mean, she fully commits to the character, to just the over-the-topness of Think the cartoon character. I mean, she personifies this, and I think they did a really great job in casting her. And, you know, she's doing her job. She's acting, and she's making me believe that I am truly seeing Dora. And even though it's cringy at some points, you gotta give her props for doing it, and just for the, the film itself, because it made it that much more enjoyable. I also like that the cheesy fun can be enjoyed by kids, teens, and adults too. I mean, there is something for everybody. Yes, it is cringeworthy at times, but you can still have a great time. There's no sex or nudity. There is mild profanity and mild violence. I give Dora and the Lost City of Gold three and a half out of five couches. So did you watch Dora when it was animated on Nickelodeon? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me. Can you say subscribe? Subscribe. <laughs> I'm an idiot.